Question number 24. Um, this is another topic which is new in the syllabus, which is box and whisker plots. This is new for the syllabus of the IGCSE. Um, new 2020 syllabus, 2020 syllabus. Um, so this is 24 from the specimen paper for that syllabus. And it's about what's called box and whisker plots, which is something to do with statistics. And it says, these box and whisker plots show the monthly electricity cost for 100 different households who use electro company or spark company. So each of these contains 100 sets of data. And we have to see if what Tom says is sensible or not. Tom says that the monthly costs with electro company are lower and very less than with spark company. Is he correct? Justify your answer with reference to the box and whisker plot. So you don't just say yes or no. You can say yes or you can say no, but whatever you say has to be justified with reference to this box plot. Okay, so first of all, what is a box and whisker plot? Well, a box and whisker plot is a visual representation of some important pieces of um, or parts of the data. Now, there's five vertical lines that you see which represent five different uh, particular values so the the lowest value okay the, the line furthest to the left is basically the lowest value in all the data that was the lowest cost okay which both of them had the same lowest cost which was look, i think everyone's two here two four six eight ten yes yeah, so exactly in half the lowest cost for both of them was 30. Okay, and then you have the highest cost, which is the one on the furthest right, which again, it's the same for both of them. So it looks like that's 98, 96, 94. That's the highest cost for both of them. The lowest and the highest cost was the same for both of them. But then you have this information that's in this middle part. So what you have is a, a box. In the center of the box, it's what's called the median, the median value, the value that's right in the middle. Okay, that's given the term Q2. Okay, so Q2 is an important, very important piece of information. And Q2 for the electro company, as you can see here, is at this point over there. That's 42, 44, 46, 48, 50. Let me just get rid of some of these lines here. Okay, just to see it properly. We're going to go up to exactly here, yeah. So that's... 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So it's 52. So the median for this company is 52. And the median for the Spark company is 42, 4, 6. 2, 4, yeah, 2, 4, 6. 46. Okay, that tells you basically that 50% of all of the costs were less than 52 and 50% of them were more than 52. For, for this one, the Q2 for this one, 50% of the costs were less than 46 and the other 50% of the costs were all more than 46. So we can see that in, in, on average, um, Spa Company has a lower cost on average. Its cost is lower, which is actually contradicting the statement that Tom says. So Tom is incorrect in that aspect. And then it says um, very less. So how can you tell the variation in the costs? Well, it's not by the lowest value and the highest value, because here it looks like they're exactly the same, right? The variation is given by what's called the interquartile range, because here we have what's called the lower quartile, and here we have what's called the upper quartile. The lower quartile is such that 25% of all the data is below it, and of course 75% is above it. And the upper quartile is such that 20, 75% of all the data is less than it and 25% of all the data is more than this. Okay, so basically 75% um, of the data lies to the left of here and 25% of the data lies to the left of here. So 50% of the data is contained within this box. So we can see that if you look at the interquartile range, you're not looking at the extreme values, you're looking at the values which are in the middle 50% of the data. So that's what's used to give us an idea of how spread out the data is. If the interquartile range is smaller, 
then the data it varies less. If it's bigger, then the data varies more. So we, we judge this variation of the data not by the lowest and the highest value, but by what's called the interquartile range. So the interquartile range is given by Q3, it's Q3 minus Q1. The lower quartile, upper quartile minus the lower quartile. So in this case, you've got Q3 is exactly 60 minus and Q1 is 42. That's going to give us 50 to 18. 60 minus 42 is 18. And for the Spark Company, Q3 minus Q1 is going to give us 64 minus 38. 64 minus 38. 64 minus 38, gives me some, some mistake, is 26. That's 26. So we can see that the interquartile range for the electro company is 18, and the interquartile range for the spark company is 26. So we can see that the electro company, its costs vary less. So, okay, so he's correct in saying that the electro company uh, very less, but he's incorrect in saying that they're lower. So let's just, it says, justify your answer with reference to the box and whisker plot. So we have to say that Tom is incorrect in saying that electro company costs are lower as the median of electro company's costs was greater is greater than the median of spark company if you want you can say you know this was 52 is greater than 46 52 is greater than 46 okay and then you can say Tom is correct so we have bad handwriting is correct in saying that the costs of electro company vary less because the interquartile range for electro is less than the interquartile range for spark. Okay, interquartile range was 26, uh, 18 is less than 26, 18 is less than 26. Okay, so having those values above writing Q2, Q3, Q1, and interquartile range, and referring to them in your statement down here is what you need to get the marks for this part of the question, for this question. Thank you for watching. And the other uh, questions on this paper can be found in the playlist, which is referenced, or which is um, linked in the description below of the video. Thank you for watching.